Hello and welcome to, once again to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We have a very AMD focused video for you today and we're going to start things off with some very interesting findings from the subreddit users over at r slash AMD regarding Navi 14. So as I've said, the place where I've discovered this was the r slash AMD subreddit, but where they have discovered this was the 3dcenter.org forums. And basically what we have is five variants of the Navi 14 GPU, which are going to be both desktop and notebook platforms from what we can gather from the listing. Now, what we initially had was just a listing of the names of these GPUs, um, what they're going to be known as internally at least, but thanks to some updates from the OP of the um, Reddit thread, we do have some game clocks or peak clock for each variant as well. So let's just go through what we can see and also what we can glean from this. So we see the Navi 14 Peak XT with 1670, Navi 14 XTM, 1448, Navi 14 XLM, 1181, and the Navi 14 XTX, 1717, and the Navi 14 XL as well. So again, various clock speeds and clearly various different SKUs. Undoubtedly we're going to be seeing like the 5300 here and some mobile variants here as well. But I find it really interesting that we do see such a wide spread of clock speeds here. I mean, as I said many times, Navi 14 is going to be really important for AMD and of course Nvidia are very aware that they need to sort of fatten out their lower end as well and they have pretty much been doing that obviously with stuff like the 6600 and so on and so forth and AMD obviously are still kind of filling out that end of the Navi lineup obviously we do have stuff like the 5500 going on but obviously they could do more and obviously they are doing more with these particular cards Obviously the flagship of this is going to be that top one with the 1617, then of course you see 1448 just beneath it. So it's going to be really interesting to see these cards confirmed by AMD. Of course, as always, we should take these with a pinch of salt until they are officially confirmed. But still, interesting nonetheless, and you will find a link to the Reddit thread, which itself has a link to the forum thread in the description below this video. But we're going to move on now to some comments from Lisa Sue. Um, she was recently interviewed by GamesBeat. So of course, recently I discussed AMD's very strong third quarter financial results and of course their continued domination in the MineFactory.de uh, findings as well. You can see that in my recent video on this very channel. And following those results, Lisa Sue was interviewed by GameBeat and she discussed numerous things. You of course can find a link to their interview in the description below this video as well. So obviously they're very keen to push towards consoles now. They're kind of mid-generation at the moment. Obviously Ryzen 3000 came out a few months ago and obviously they're preparing for what's going on next, but obviously the next gen consoles are going to be huge given that they are in both the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet. And AMD said, quote, console business is a great business for us. We're very happy to be in the next generation, Sony and Microsoft consoles for 2020. We're going through a product transition at the moment. Most of the engine energies have turned to the new consoles. But our expectation is that as the generation ramps down, we'll have a strong ramp to the next generation, particularly as we go into the second half of 2020. And she once again hammered home the message of the fact that they want Radeon everywhere. Obviously that's hardly surprising given that they have used this phrase and imagery at most of their recent conferences like Computex and their E3 conference and so on. And she once again made a point of mentioning this. She said, quote, the way to think about it, we want Radeon graphics to be everywhere. Everywhere means in the data center, in gaming, in PCs, in consoles, as well as in mobile. Samsung, as our partner in graphics, is both a licensing opportunity as well as a development opportunity where we're jointly optimizing our Radeon graphics for low power applications. Again, it's one of those areas where having the architecture span across all these product segments is a good thing for developers and a good thing for the architecture. Now, of course, their full interview is very lengthy, and I'm not going to go through it all here because I'd be here until pretty much next Christmas, not even this Christmas, next Christmas. But one thing I do want to speak about here is, of course, their competitors, Intel. You know, as much as AMD have been very competitive, AMD and um, Intel, sorry, have obviously been very keen to match them step for step. And obviously, they're about to launch some very interesting new products. And um, they asked them about this. And she said, quote, to finish off this year, we're planning on launching our Ryzen 9 3950X as well as our Threadripper product portfolio. You'll see that over the next few weeks in November, we're very excited about those. High-end desktop leadership is a market that's important for us, both for content creators and on the mainstream side for gamers and mainstream users. We'll continue to push the desktop roadmap there. Also pretty excited as we go into 2020. You'll start to see our next generation mobile products as well 
coming in early 2020. You'll see 7nm mobile chips that have yet to come to market. That's a pretty strong portfolio. We were underway with Zen 3 as a follow-on as well for 2020. Lots of product activity. Even though 2019 was a big product year, I think 2020 will be even larger for us. So obviously they're very aware of what Intel are doing and Intel are not going to take this lying down, but it seems AMD are not going to just let them retake the lead either. They're definitely going to be bringing their A game in 2020. So we're going to move over to our last AMD topic for today. We do have much beyond that, but the last AMD thing for today is actually regarding Ryzen 3000 itself. And this is definitely something a little unexpected. What we see is Wanosmus, a fellow over on Twitter, who has basically revealed a new power plan that nets a not bad increase of 200 to 250 megahertz on Ryzen 3000 processors. Again, nothing to write home about, but that extra little bit of power can really make a huge difference as you guys know. So this does include the upcoming Threadripper 3000 series apparently, and obviously the 3950X and 3900X, and he also made a point of saying that all processors will get an improvement when someone asked him if this would be possible for the 3700X. So basically, we will see clock speed gains thanks to these um, power plans across pretty much the entire Ryzen 3000 stack, which is pretty damn crazy. Now, according to him, the mod is currently working the best on dies with two CCDs, so more than eight cores, but again, it is going to be applying to the lower end, but that is why it will apply to the upcoming Threadripper series. Now, he has said that he has sent an official recommendation to AMD and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be made part of the official stack. And AMD are usually pretty good about listening to this sort of feedback, so I will not be surprised at all to see it included before too long. So for those of you wanting to get your hands on how to do this, well, there is a link to the dis um, this in the description up below this video, a very interesting write-up um, on this by techpowerup.com. Go give that a read and you can follow him on Twitter himself at 1USMUS as well. So, very interesting stuff and kind of related to this but not. Um, some interesting tech is coming to World of Warcraft. Now, of course, Blizzard just had their annual BlizzCon event. And during that, of course, they announced a new expansion for World of Warcraft, that being Shadowlands, of course. And MMO Champion interviewed the senior game producer Michael Bybee, and also the lead software engineer Patrick Magruder during the event, and you can find their full interview once again linked below. So, they discussed a lot of stuff, unsurprisingly, but the biggest thing is that apparently they're looking to adding ray tracing into the game as well, which would be very, very cool to see. Now, unfortunately, we don't know what kind of ray tracing will be added. Obviously, ray tracing can be implemented in a number of ways, like shadows, global illumination, reflections, ambient occlusion, and so on and so on. So it could be used in any sort of way. Obviously, Blizzard still wants to keep it sort of playable on the lower end spec of systems. So I doubt they'll go too crazy and it undoubtedly will be optional as well. But it's still nice to see and will undoubtedly make some of the new upcoming content look very, very shiny indeed. But we're going to move on to our final topic for today, which is regarding a rumour. A very interesting one for Valve and Apple. So, according to a report from DigiTimes, which once again will be linked below, lots of links for you there today, Apple and Valve have basically made a very interesting team together and are going to be developing an AR headset. And this is not something that's going to be in the far-flung future, but by the time it comes out, you're going to be like, oh, I forgot they are even doing that. No, apparently it's going to be coming out in the second half of 2020. And obviously, Valve are heavily, heavily um, invested in VR. Obviously, they have their own version of it, um, finally. So, obviously, we don't know much about what they're doing, but we just know, at least according to this report, that they may be unveiling AR headsets in the second half, which are going to be developed again with Valve. So I guess it would make sense to branch out into AR as well, because this is an arena that not actually anyone is touching, other than Microsoft, obviously, with the HoloLens, which is, at the moment at least, or at least for the foreseeable future, not going to be a consumer-level product. They have made that clear um, with the availability and, of course, the pricing of the device. But still, would be very interesting to see if this was true. It makes perfect sense to me as well for Apple to do this. You know, they're very keen on their AR stuff with their latest phone releases. I'll be curious to see, though, guys, your opinions. Would you actually purchase an AR headset or are you more interested in VR? The you know, applications of AR are kind of a bit harder to picture, I guess. Probably not really meant for gaming, but we'll have to see, of course. Well, interesting to see the applications they can cook up um, in between them. 
So that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.